grade. That is tonight. Preschool is um, one still has a few needs. If you're interested in donating to the Sunshine Preschool, those um, tags for donations are on little apples outside of Sandra Rogers' office or the Education Office or the Children's Ministry Office. It's got three different names for the room. We're going to grab one of those tags off and drop that item off here at the church. Best place to drop it off is in the kitchen with that tag. Also, preschool for a fundraiser is um, they are selling Stromboli's. If you're interested, the order form is in your programs this morning. Just drop that off in the offering plate. But make sure when you write your check that the check is written to the Sunshine Preschool. There's Marvelous Mondays tomorrow night um, from 5.15 to 7 o'clock when dinner is served at 5.15. That's for our students anywhere from about three years of age, those who are in preschool through sixth grade. Alan, you don't have to be that excited about going. Wow, I'm impressed. I am most Mondays that excited too, but that's when they're just hoping I grow up someday. Moving on. Also, at the end of no, at the end of these October, one month we end. At the end of October, Marvelous Mondays will finish up as we will move into our children's Christmas practice, Christmas program practice. So details of your programs as well as that beginning in November will begin weekly practices for our Christmas program for our kids. Meanwhile, this Wednesday will begin our cantata practice. So if you're interested in singing the cantata and want more details, please see Patty Fletcher or see somebody else in the praise team um, or come Wednesday evening for practice. That's right? Okay, yeah, just double checking because I get a lot of things wrong and then I hear about it. We'd love for you to be a part of the church directory. You don't have to be a member. You don't even have to attend here all the time. It's about folks who call this their church. So we'd love to have you as part of the church directory. Sign up outside there on the white table right where Jim and John were handing out the programs this morning. Today is the last day. Henceforth, if you know of somebody who you don't think signed up and you want to be part of the directory, get on them right away to sign up. Growth groups will be meeting again this week. Now, it's going to be a strange week for our growth groups, where our growth groups will be in a, a, a where most groups will be doing something fun or a service project or whatnot this week, because it's easy to just sit around and read and learn. But if you don't put into practice, as you say you believe, then you probably don't believe it. So we're trying to model that with our growth groups. I know one growth group is going to a nursing home to visit some residents. So if you're interested in being part of a growth group, Make sure you contact that leader um, or us in the church office where we can hook you up with that leader to um, the intention of being part of the group. COPE will be meeting on October 15th. If you want to hear stories about people who have recovered from substance addiction, if you want to hear stories about folks who have overcome mental illness, including PTSD, um, please come Wednesday, October 15th as people share their stories. It looks like it'll be a very powerful night to hear about Jesus Christ has changed people's lives. That's October 15th. Don't need to sign up or anything like that. Just show up for COPE that evening. 18th, did I get that wrong? I get a lot of things wrong. I think I already mentioned that. 18th, if you come here the 15th, you're going to have a long wait. 18th, yeah. 18th, 15th is Sunday. 18th is Wednesday. Thank you, Denise. I wish you were on the ball. And thank you for, for to... Phil Gone, Judy Gone, Laverne Newton, Connie Snively, who were intentional by coming out this week and they folded all the newsletters. That saves us hours in the church office of other work. They willingly give up their time uh, to help fold the church newsletter. So we need to make sure I say thank you to them. Friends, why don't we greet one another with the love of Christ? <laughs> Thank you. 
if his notes were right. So, I'm going to try to tweak him in somewhere. Somebody's been messing with this and he sounds like he's talking through a tube or something. Try to do it without blowing everybody through. And so, my friends, when we grab our seats and continue to prepare our hearts and eyes for worship.
found on page 881 in your handouts. Well, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last thing. Amen. My friends, please be seated.
this. Yeah. You want everyone to leave. Yeah. <laughs> well, friends, it's time for our children's message. If our youngest folks would like to come forward, that'd be a great thing. Well, I think it's you and not Caroline.
But then, too, also, surely in the midst of this battle with this um, um, blood clot that just hasn't seemingly gone away. So be praying for Shirley as well. Although, when you said it, Jack, at first I thought you said the doctor met with Shirley and didn't know what to do with her. <laughs> That's what they said. That might be true. <laughs> Either way, be praying for that. Because this is, this is moving into tricky territory. Okay? So be praying for Shirley. Friends, what else do we need to be praying for? What else do you want to thank God for? Caroline, why couldn't it? Oh my. Shelly, I'm going to almost go to Carolina and Adeline. Wow. Good morning. Shelly. John and I are grateful we flew out of Vegas um, Sunday morning last weekend, so we missed the craziness by just a few hours. But we're grateful we weren't there for that. Yeah. And we'd like to pray for that. Shelly and Sean were made it out of Vegas just hours before everything went terribly wrong. So, and also for us to keep praying for the folks who were in Vegas, those who were survivors and the family members who were left wondering why. Thanks, right. Shelly. Friends, is there anything else we need to be praying for? We want to thank God for or praise God for who God is. Then, why don't we go to the Lord together in prayer? Father, so much in our lives is really out of our control. Whether it is suddenly this mass shooting in Vegas, or we see the, the devastation that hurricanes have brought, up, brought about in the South, when we look at the tensions with North Korea, when we look at Washington wondering what in the world at times what these folks are doing, and no matter what side of the aisle we may line ourselves up with, even our side of the aisle still leaves us scratching our heads. Father, what is going on? We realize that so much of our life is out of our control. Forgive us when we try to control things. And yet, maybe that's also a coping mechanism. Help us to find our peace and our hope in you. You are the God who is above all things. You are the one who created all things. You are the one who holds us in the palm of his hand. You are the God who made us in the first place. And even looking at human beings, that it is very good. You're the God who made us. You're the God who redeemed us through your son, Jesus Christ. You're the God who brings about forgiveness for us and showers us with your grace. We thank you. Oh, it's a scary world we live in. We realize that so much is out of our control. And yet, we cling to you. So as we cling to you, we're praying for healing for Shirley in the midst of this battle with the blood clot that the medication's not working on. We pray for healing. We pray against this blood clot in the name of Jesus. Father, we're asking for protection in the midst of the storm they're calling for here, as well as the storms that may hit with other hurricanes winding up in the south. We're praying for protection. Father, we're praying for those who are left in the wake of the shootings in Vegas family members whose lives have been torn apart, we pray for healing. We pray that you send the spirit of comfort and peace. Father, we're asking that you be with those who are still recovering. We're praying, Father, for their healing. We come before you and also ask that you be with the family members of the shooter whose lives have been torn apart and now suddenly they are known nationally and internationally. Praying Father that you be with them as well. Father, we're asking, I really want to thank you for the gift of 63 years of marriage for Jack and Shirley. What a blessing. In the midst of a world that doesn't make sense, in the midst of a world where so much seems to be out of our control, there are still things that you've done in our lives that remind us and show us how good we are. For those of us who are struggling, for strength for those of us who are overjoyed. We ask God that you give us a way to share that with love and respect. We thank you, Father. You are the God who is in the midst of our lives. So, Father, we want to praise you and thank you as we pray, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to give us our sin and evil. For God is kingdom, and power, and glory, and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Friends, the scripture reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 23. Zaley, thank you. You know Zaley is filling in today in June, and Steve weren't able to make it today, so. And again, thanks, Zaley. to Jesus. What must I do to inherit eternal life? 
And Jesus would fly back at him with a question, as he always seemingly did, to come with a question, not the answers. Jesus' question back was, well, what are the commandments? And the, young, the rich young man fired back all these things he kept since he was a child. I haven't murdered anybody, I haven't committed adultery, I haven't stolen, I haven't lied, I haven't defrauded anybody, I haven't, I've honored my mother and my father. Fascinatingly, if you read through Matthew chapter 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus describes these commandments, <laughs> it's not just about not murdering. If you even have an angry thought at someone, it's as though you've committed murder in your mind. If you look at someone the wrong way, then maybe you've committed adultery, or you've looked at their things and want what they have, you've, you've been envious, to the point where even our thoughts can be trash, where we can fall into that trap of sin. There's a rich young man saying, I haven't done all those things since I was a young man. And Jesus said, well, well done. Here's what you lack. I'll fill in the word here. You're not that generous. Here's what you've lacked. You haven't done anything for anybody else in terms of helping. So, sell everything you have, give it away to the poor, and then come follow me. Friends, I guess that's their instant way into heaven, right? Just go sell everything you have, and then you're going to suddenly get into heaven if you give it all away to the poor. That's really not what Jesus is saying. He nailed the young man because the guy went away sad. He went thinking that he was all arrogant and had it all together too. He left in sadness. Because Jesus told him to give away everything he had. Most likely this, this person's hope was in their wealth. So Jesus' response to the disciples who were there was, it's so difficult for someone who's rich to enter the kingdom of God. Or this translation, the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because we can put our hope in so many places. Next few weeks we'll be talking about from Andy Stanley's book, How to Be Rich, where the dangers with finances and how we can put our hope in how much we have. And yet, for this passage, that's part of what's going on, and yet that's not the full thing. Because the young man walked away sad. For example, if we think about the cross here, if he wanted to follow Jesus, he would be as near as Jesus as he could. No, that rich young man, nope. He's going the other way. He is out of there. He is going far away from Jesus as he can because he's not willing to follow. He's out. It's about finances for him might be his downfall. But the real problem is, is he wasn't willing to follow Jesus. He's gone, as they may say. But Jesus is looking for somebody who's willing to follow him. Someone who desires to follow him. That's the, the, the scary, beautiful, wonderful part about being a Christian, is that Jesus asks us to follow him. It's not about being good enough, my friends. The beautiful thing about being a Christian is that willingness for us to follow. How good is good enough? The following, well, the following means that it's not good enough. It's all about following. Christianity means that you're a person who's willing to follow Jesus. Even Christian, that term in the ancient realm, meant that somebody who looked like Jesus, who was a little Jesus, even is what Christian maybe gets at. This idea that you, sort of like a child imitating their parent, will do that. The same thing for us, to follow Jesus to the point that we look like him. But that's so easily said and it's so hard to do. This summer, the young adults, as we read through John White's book, The Fight, we, we encounter some difficult passages, in the, including this from Matthew 10. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus, in that same passage, gets at this. If you're not willing to hate your mother or your father, your sister or your brother or your child, you're not worthy of me. What? These are not easy passages to agree through. And some of the young adults in, in that group were almost cross-eyed when you, when, you, when you read that. It's about how much you love Jesus, not hating your family members. Although I bet you have some moments. As we've read from how good is good enough this, this fall, we've, we've come in contact with quite a few difficult passages. Like, the thief on the cross did nothing besides yell the other thief to Wise enough. Stop ridiculing Jesus. He's done nothing wrong to deserve death. Remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus forgave that thief. Or when Jesus says such things as that no one is good on their own when he talks to the good, when he talks to the young ruler. Or 
that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 14, Jesus' own words, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We've encountered a ton of difficult passages which point us to the fact that it's about following Jesus. He's the only way, the only truth, the only life. The other options don't measure up. Friends, I'd like to, to make this suggestion to you that we are wired to follow someone. When we do it well, we're following Jesus, but we as human beings want to follow someone. Maybe it's parents, maybe it's a school when we were little, we were taught to follow the teacher or whatnot. But I find fascinating that with Marvelous Mondays, all of our kids want to be the leader. They don't want the responsibility. But I have so many kids who want to be the leader, then they're shocked when nobody else wants to follow them. Except the time the kids are trying to follow Sandra Rogers or me. We're wired to want to follow someone else. As we'll see from our video clip here from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, there's this desire to follow.
I didn't know there was even a Mercer Methodist Church here. I barely knew what Mercer was when I was at Grove City College. The only thing that I did with Mercer was drive through to get to share and to eat wings at the loop. That was it. Of course, college age student, that should tell you what my priorities were. Following Jesus means that you're willing to do things out of the ordinary. You will stand out. You will seem different. But he's worth it. How good is good enough? When the following is what is so important. It's about forgiveness that God gives. And it's about this willingness to follow Jesus. This is serious business. Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher, told this story. That there was a fireman in a local town who was well respected in the law. He showed kindness to everybody, but when there was a fire, it was serious business. Why? Because it's not as though they had the high-tech equipment they have now. You had horse-drawn wagons with the water there. These, the firefighters were trained to put out a fire quickly, rapidly. One day there was a fire, and the firemen rushed to the scene of the blaze. Except the problem was that there were 200-some townspeople there holding their little water press pistols. And they just pulled out their water pistols and they were shooting water. Oh, sorry about that. I almost shot at you guys with my water gun. Kathy, if I got you wet, I don't want to apologize. It just wanted to happen. Anyhow, we'll move on. Now, we're unloaded here this morning. But they pulled out the little water guns to start shooting at the blaze. Notice the blaze with a building about the size of the church here, fully engulfed in flames. What do you think this little water gun's going to do? 200 people are there with the little water guns. It, made, it might have made a little dent, but normally half that water is evaporated before it gets to the fire. What good is that? And yet they're there blocking the way from anybody else getting to the fire as they stood there. Now the fire chief, he looked at them and said, what are you doing? Well, sir, said one of the gentlemen, we're here to make, make you feel better. We're here to, you know, lend a helping hand. We're here to help without the fire. Squirt, squirt, squirt. And nothing changed. Are you kidding me? The fire chief explained. Do you understand what we're here to do? I've got trained professionals here who want to help. Why are you in the way? We're here to help as well. Squirt to work. Get out of the way! Here the card describes the fireman saying, you are not helping, you're hurting issues. This is serious business. People come here to a fire to save other people's lives and are willing to die. Men have come here willing to die to save other people. You are doing nothing but hindering. Oh, Jesus is serious business. It really is. We can talk about all the nice things, wonderful things that have to go with being a Christian. But friends, if you're not willing to follow Jesus, you're missing out. You're missing out on growing. You're missing out on how God can blow you away with what God's able to do in your life. If you're not willing to follow, you are missing out. It is not easy. It is frustrating. And it's incredibly beautiful. I don't think I would have ever met my wife, Tina, if I had been willing to follow when I couldn't afford to go on that mission trip. Never would have shown up here if I wasn't willing to follow Jesus. I don't know what God's got in store for you. But when you're willing to follow Jesus, He can change everything. And He can use you. The trouble is, is, for many of us, we say, that's nice, but I want to be comfortable. That's nice, but I don't want to change anything. Jerome's message hopefully pointed at the fact that if you want what's best, you've got to be willing to fall down. How good is good enough, at least when it comes to heaven? How good is good enough? It's not good enough. What is good enough is the willingness to follow. Are you willing to follow Jesus? That's what matters. One of the reasons why we have our growth groups is that intentionally in a group setting, we encourage each other to follow Jesus. So here's your assignment for this week, if you're willing to follow through on it. Go to a growth group this week. Now they're going to be doing things, as I mentioned earlier, our growth groups will be on the whole in some sort of activity this week. It might be a service project or whatnot. They might be just meeting here as well. I know one group is going to a local nursing home to meet with some of the residents. Go to a growth group. It's not always about learning. Because to be honest, if all you do is learn and you don't put it into practice, you probably haven't learned anything. At least as a Christian. So they'll be out and about this week. If you're interested in going to a group, because this would be a great week to jump in, contact one of the growth group leaders or us in the office to help you get caught up with the group. That's your assignment. Because friends, it's really all about following. 
Growth groups are just a tool to help us figure out how we can follow Jesus better. Because Jesus looked at that rich young man, and the guy missed the mark, he missed the point. He thought it was all about what he did, and he really wasn't willing to follow Jesus. That's what it's all about. For us in response to what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, our forgiveness and grace is about following. Who we follow? I encourage you to pray with me this morning. If you would, close your eyes and turn your hands toward heaven. If you'd rather follow along with a prayer, whether because you lose track or difficult to follow, just read it on the screen behind me. But there's something about when we close our eyes and talk with God. So, friends, let us pray. Lord God, loving Father, Lord God, loving Father, I love you. I, love you. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. There is no turning back. There is no turning back. You are worthy to fall. You are worthy to fall. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Friends, one of the ways that we do this whole thing of following Jesus is actually through the giving of our whoops, there we go. Giving of our tithes and our offerings. It seems a little strange to give away. And yet it's a way to show God that we love God. So if you would, let's continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And as our ushers make their way forward, the fish here for our local food pantry, loaves and fishes.
checked. I have 1153 on my watch right now. I never finish on time. So hold on, let me go back. Let me. There's your subtle hint. I'm joking. Why drag things out? You and I, we get to leave here today, we get to follow. It may seem like it came off as some boring thing, but for friends, you want to see God moving and working in incredible ways and surprising yeah. ways where pieces are fit together when you don't know they can be fit together. That's when you're willing to follow Jesus. When you and I have control over things, it becomes dull and boring. If you're willing to live the kind of life that he wants you to live, you will let go and let him lead as you follow. And so as you leave here today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you. And as you follow, may he give you peace. Amen and amen. That part did mess up. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.